Good morning from the St. Louis Zoo, one of the world's largest free zoos. We're kind of just off the beaten path here. It's pretty crowded. It's a really nice day. My name is Dan and I'm here to show you some of my favorite places here on a pretty crowded, beautiful Saturday morning here at the St. Louis Zoo. So let's go check it out. Our first stop is going to be the Penguin and Puffin Cove, which is one of the coolest little indoor spots it's really cold in there, which is interesting being that it's pretty cold this morning, but um, really up close views of penguins and puffins. It reminds me of kind of an exhibit you might see at SeaWorld, but um, one of my favorite spots. It's an addition, not a fairly recent addition, but it's really changed up this area and become a very popular place for people to go in the zoo. Next up is the Fragile Forest, which has a lot of like orangutans and other types of gorillas. And sometimes can be a little hard to see animals there. They don't seem to come out that much. Hopefully it'll be a little better early in the morning. So let's hope, let's check it out. It's also interesting that you have kind of multiple ways to get in here where you actually have an inside building and then the outside part we just saw the fragile forest so there's quite a lot to see this area used to just kind of be called the jungle of the apes but they've really expanded this in kind of a cool way as you can see this area is not currently occupied i believe the animal is undergoing some treatment but just to give you an idea of the scale of the inside of this building, this is actually for the chimpanzee, but it gives you an idea of just how much space they have along with what's outside. It's uh, pretty cool. Another thing that's very cool is they have a birdcage here from 1904 World's Fair. So unfortunately it's not open today. I really wanted to check it out, but this goes back to the, basically the zoo kind of built up around this. This is one of the oldest areas in the zoo but goes back to the 1904 World's Fair and it's pretty cool inside. It's actually open as we are inside now, the Cypress Swamp, otherwise known as the 1904 World's Fair birdcage. Let's take a little walk. One thing that's really cool about the 1904 World's Fair Birdcage, they've done a lot of rehabbing on it. It like doesn't look the same. I remember being very like bare and not having nearly as many trees. Now they do call it the Cypress Swamp. So I think that's added a lot to it, but this is kind of a cool gem. It's also less crowded. Some of these areas, like I was looking at earlier, like the Penguin and Puffin Cove can be a little 
a bit of a madhouse, where this area you almost feel like you have the entire zoo to yourself. And just also having the history with the 1904 World's Fair is an added benefit here, kind of in this weird corner, kind of tucked away here in the zoo. The lesser kudu here is being very stoic. <laughs> <laughs> he's got they got a pretty nice area here there's several of them but this guy he's um no it is really really focused on whatever's happening here and just kind of a nice space here This guy is really trying to get himself all dirtied up here as a way of cleaning himself here. I am not going to say the name of what this animal is just in case because you never know with YouTube, but I'm going to scroll down so you can see it. This place is very familiar to me. When I used to work at the zoo in food service in the late 90s, this was called the East Refreshment Stand. And I'm sad to say this looks exactly the same as it did back then, basically 30 years ago. And um, I really hope they've replaced that fry grease because it was not good. These guys I'm less familiar with, they're called an Adax. And apparently they can survive with almost no water and you can see them kind of eating some dirt over there. Quite a few of them here out in the morning. Again, not a hot day, so I think we're seeing a lot of animals just hanging out, enjoying the fact that it's August at about 60 degrees. This Transcapian Uriel is standing precariously on top of this rock. I'm getting a little nervous. <laughs> He's motionless. I'm not sure what's really happening, but um, it's a fun shot here of him just hanging out there and you see over here one of the other family members one of the others is uh looks a little concerned another cool area here is the sea lion sound we are actually up above and you can hear the sea lions there but um we're gonna oh that nice we're gonna go down under where they have a tunnel that you can walk and see under this area so let's do that right now Thing that's really cool about the zoo is that everything I've shown today is totally free. Yes, you can pay extra for the train or even for better parking, and they have like a 4D theater and a carousel, but everything we've seen entirely free. You can park nearby in Forest Park, you can check everything out, and it's one of the world's largest free zoos. So there's a ton to see, and we haven't even seen a lot of it. Some animals weren't out, so it's been really cool to catch up with so much but there's so many other things that we didn't even see here we saw maybe a third of the zoo so far now entering an area called the river's edge and this reminds me the most of disney's animal kingdom just look at this right here i mean those walking trails it has a definitely similar vibe so let's go check it out You could easily tell me we were on like the Gorilla Falls walking trail right now, and I would not be shocked. Well, we can kind of spot a rhino there from behind the tree. It's very crowded here, so it's been tough to get an easy view, but there is the backside of a rhino. We have now found the front side of the rhino. So combine the two videos, you've got a full right now. Asian elephants. Once again, we are seeing the backside, but it's still pretty cool video.
It's a rare opportunity where there are not tons of people around getting to see a pretty cool shot of this Asian elephant eating. I think I finally bypassed the people, but this is, this is really cool and it's basically no one around here, so it's really nice. Here's a nice little aquarium of like Missouri fish. They're so not moving much. They are very tired. Another thing to note is they actually have Dole Whips here. They have pineapple and raspberry flavors. There's another place that has them, but it's never open. So come to this River Camp Cafe which is pretty easy to find and open for the most part, not early in the morning and pick up one, only $4.99. So that's gonna do it here for our day at the St. Louis Zoo. I should also mention that we are in Forest Park, which also has the St. Louis Art Museum, the Missouri History Museum, the St. Louis Science Center, all accessible for free admission. And one thing, this is the big park in the middle of St. Louis. The only downside is, is that on a nice weekend day, it can get very crowded. So maybe come early in the day, maybe come late, or just prepare yourself. It's not crazy because the zoo is so large. You just have to be ready in terms of getting there and expecting, kind of like any theme park or amusement park, that you're gonna see a lot of people. But there's still tons to see. I had a great time checking in with a lot of animals I haven't seen in years at a place where I used to work years ago when I was in high school and college in food service. We saw that briefly. A lot of fun to check it out. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Would love to hear what you think about it. If you have any questions about the St. Louis Zoo, leave them in the comments below and I would love to answer them and tell you more about it because there's a lot of cool stuff to see here. <laughs>